everybody. Thanks for watching Liturgy of the Word for Wednesday in the 20th week of Ordinary Time. Let's sing Rain Down. Everybody, welcome to Wednesday of the uh, uh, of the twentieth week of Ordinary Time, and today's a feast day, a feast of Saint John Eudes, and he is a member of what is called the French School of Spirituality, and uh, this French school includes people like Saint Vincent de Paul, uh, Louis Rena Montfort, uh, a lot of others who I'm surprised are not canonized saints, uh, and some women involved with all this too, and. Um, what an interesting group, and, and their spirituality is very much alive, and, and it was very much a, 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 um, a reaction to Jansenism. Jansenism believing that our, our, our human nature were fundamentally corrupt, were fundamentally bad, and, it's, and, and that still exists today. You know, uh, people uh, thinking that they're garbage, that they're no good. Uh, um, this is Jansenism, and was very much alive and well then, it still exists a little bit today, but also, too, this French School of Spirituality um, uh, by Louis Rena Montfort, one of the members of this, of this group, um, consecrating our lives to Jesus through Mary, that with Mary, in Mary, we make our way to Jesus. And uh, so the, the Marian consecration is very much a part of the spirituality as well. So we're here to pray through the intercession of St. John Eudes as we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. And let's ask Jesus for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Be almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully chose the priest, St. John Eudes, to proclaim the unfathomable riches of Christ, grant us by his example and teaching that growing in knowledge of you, we may live faithfully in the light of the gospel. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. In these words, prophesy to them, to the shepherds. Thus says the Lord God, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who have been pasturing themselves. Should not shepherds rather pasture sheep? You have fed off their milk, worn their wool, and slaughtered the fatlings, but the sheep you have not pastured. You did not strengthen the weak, nor heal the sick, nor bind up the injured. You did not bring back the strayed, nor seek the lost, but you lorded it over them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered for the lack of a shepherd and became food for all the wild beasts. My sheep were scattered and wandered over all the mountains and high hills. My sheep were scattered over the whole earth with no one to look after them or to search for them. Therefore, shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, says the Lord God, because my sheep have been given over to pillage and because my sheep have become food for every wild beast for lack of a shepherd, because my shepherds did not look after my sheep, but pastured themselves and did not pasture my sheep. Because of this, shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, I swear I am coming against these shepherds. I will claim my sheep from them and put a stop to their shepherding my sheep so that they may no longer pasture themselves. I will save my sheep that they may no longer be food for their mouths. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. Nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they, so they went off. He went out again around noon, and around three o'clock he did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, he found others standing around and said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They answered, Because nobody's hired us. And he said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to this foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and beginning with and ending with the first. Then those who had started at five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual daily wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you've made them equal to us who bore the day's burden and heat. And he said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first, the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, I want to talk about the go this Gospel today in two different phases, if I may. Um, first of all, fundamentally, this is a Gospel of God's generosity. It, it is about God's generosity, but it's also about God being beyond our expectations. He just continues to surprise us in every single way. And in Matthew's parish, here again, I was mentioning this Sunday, this is the, the Jew-Gentile issue, I think, going on here with this story once again today. The Jews, maybe the Pharisees, were the early ones who came into Matthew's parish, and they received the just wage. And then here comes the Gentiles, these late workers, and they get the same daily wage. And they're kind of angry about that. They're saying, well, they just sort of showed up. How come they're getting the same thing we are? That's God's unexpected, wild, extravagant mercy and kindness and generosity that's going on. So again, God surprised us. But what I want to talk about here for a moment is uh, in um, uh, uh, 1984, Pope John Paul wrote a document to the laity. To all of you. It's called Christa Fideli Leisis, uh, the vocation uh, and mission of the laity. And here is a, a summary of that document right here. And interestingly enough, at the very beginning of the document, he uses this gospel today to introduce what he sees as the vocation and mission of the laity as being engaged here, as in our picture here today. He quotes Matthew 20, verses 3 and 4. And going on about th the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you go to my vineyard too. And then Pope John Paul goes on to say, the call is addressed to everyone. Lay people as well as, well, lay people as well are personally called by the Lord from whom they receive a mission on behalf of the church in the world, the laity, personally called by God to have a mission uh, uh, in the church and in the world. And then he goes on to talk about two things the laity need to really, really worry about as far as your spiritual life is concerned. This are all both are very, very important, and I want to share these with you too. He goes on to say, in particular, two temptations can be cited which... They have not always known how to avoid the laity. And by the way, we're part of the problem here too. The temptation, number one, the temptation of being so strongly interested in church services and tasks 
that some fail to become actively engaged in their responsibilities in the professional, social, cultural, political world. Your primary tasks is the social, professional, cultural, and political world. And sometimes the laity can become so churchy that they forget that their primary mission, for the most part, some people work for the church who are lay people too, but I'm not talking about them. So, but your, your mission is out in the world. Then he goes on to say, number two, uh, a separation of the gospel's acceptance from the actual living of the gospel in various situations in the world. So in other words, I'm supposed to live the gospel over here, Sunday mornings, maybe my prayer, but over here in my everyday, my workaday life, my social life, my political life, my cultural life, all bets are off. And folks, let me just simply say, I think a lot of people, they put their politics in a whole little box right over here and their faith over here. I mean, your, your political box is supposed to come and become in this, right in the middle of this, of your Christian box. It's not supposed to be something separate. And the Christian box is bigger. And just stick that in there, along with your cultural, your social life too. What are you doing in the world out there that Jesus would not be terribly proud of you for doing? Where are you going that you couldn't invite Jesus to be part of the whole thing too? So he's talking about those things. And let me just finally say this one last thing. The work in the vineyard takes on great urgency today. This is written in 1984. Listen to what he says. It's not like it's just not like we wrote it yesterday. The Pope highlights the Pope highlights some trends that are emerging in present day society. He draws attention to the ever growing existence of religious indifference. Are you kidding me? And atheism in its most varied forms, particularly in its per, particularly in its perhaps most widespread form of secularism. There's the biggest form of atheism. There is, he says, a phenomena of dechristianization which strikes long-standing Christian people and which eventually calls to a re-evangelization, a re-evangelization of the church. My gosh, this, this is so critical for us to do. And so we have Alpha, we have hospitality, we have prayer ministry, we have outreach. All these things are critical for us to be able to move out there in this re-evangelization of touching this secular culture with the good news of Jesus Christ. Because mostly... They've heard about Jesus in ways that they're like saying, nah, not for me. I'm not a follower of this Jesus. But if they knew him, if they knew him truthfully, I'm sure they would. And so the Pope uses this gospel today to talk about you and your mission in the world. Not to put Jesus in some tidy, nice box, but make everything else fit into the box of who Jesus is himself. A lot to talk about with all that, but I'll stop right there. And here's our questions for today. Does the landowner seem unfair to you? What does Jesus mean by saying the first will be last? What does the parable tell us about the kingdom, this kingdom of this generous, extravagant God? God bless you, and I hope to talk to you a little bit tomorrow. 